Well, thank you for that very kind introduction, Adriana and Jonathan. Um, so, uh, I am Congressman Mark Ticano. I'm from Riverside, which is just um, about an hour away from here. And who would have thought that the first openly gay person of color would be elected from Riverside? Those of you who know where it is, right? <laughs> I mean, Riverside, really? <laughs> and really, we need to shorten that openly gay person of color down to like maybe one word. So, you know, I, leg I legitimize the word Gaysian. Um, <laughs> I'm supposed to be working in, on a book called, that I've, 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 the working title is, you know, Memoirs of a Gaysian in Congress. <laughs> <clears throat> and if you didn't know, that was sort of a play on the title of a novel, you know, Memoirs of a Geisha in Congress. Uh, no, Memoirs of a Geisha. Not, <laughs> the Geisha never went to Congress. So. Um, I got through the first few chapters, it was good, but I just didn't have the, but you know what, uh, novels, I taught, I taught English literature uh, during my, the latter part of my career, and you know, the great thing about novels and literature is, is that they ask us to imagine the experience of other people, right? And I, I consider the reading of literature and novels part of a, of a, I think, important, they're important parts of an education. I don't think everybody has to read them all the time, but, you know, to tackle, you know, a, a, you know, a substantive piece of, of imagination is important because it takes us out of ourselves. It helps us not to be so egocentric. And we, I think all of us understand the danger, well, we understand more than ever now, the danger of a narcissistic, egocentric type of personality that, that, <laughs> that encourages fear and uh, disgust at people who are different and other and try to build followership and power based on making, uh, dividing people and making uh, some people, making people disparage people on the margins or people who are in a minority or, or not to try to understand the experience of others who are vulnerable minorities, right? I think we understand that. I mean, not that I'm speaking around anything or anything like that, right? So, um, uh, my, my, uh, my thought today is I just want to thank you all, all of you educators, all of you um, uh, advocates for LGBT youth, your social workers, and all the young people here today for being curious people. Um, there's that old adage that, that curiosity killed the cat, which I think is wrong. Um, I think curiosity about the other, rather than the fear of the other, is what's going to save our republic, the United States of America. And I think the spirit and the heart of curiosity is in this room, it's what's made you travel such a great distance to learn more about the people who could be otherized. I just learned a tremendous lesson from Jonathan just backstage, things I never knew about the struggle of intersex people and the terrible things that get done in the name of, I don't know, in the name of what uh, to intersex people. And uh, it really troubled me and I hope to bring Jonathan back to Washington to explain and share his experience so members of Congress can get outside of their limited experience of the world and understand that we need to expand more protections for vulnerable people in this country and around the world. <laughs> so
So um, I, uh, I just want to, I hope you learned a lot. I want to tell you that as a teacher, it, it took me in my final year, I was outed in 1994 in a terrible, terribly competitive election. And uh, in those days, they thought it was perfectly fine to be homophobic um, and use um, outing as a way to try and defeat me. And I was defeated by 17 percentage points. Um, in 2012, the world had changed thanks to um, the activism of people who said uh, that they'd want to live double lives, insincere lives, and they came out of the closet and shared uh, who they were, their true selves, with their friends, family, and neighbors. And that changed the world so that by the time 2012 came around and I had a second chance, or actually a third chance, to run for Congress in Riverside, um, I would win that election by 19 points, right? And be, I'm coming first. So I'm evidence that change can happen, um, but I think this conference has taught us, has taught you, there's more change to do, more change to make happen. Uh, progress is not inevitable. It can be reversed, it can be stopped. Uh, it's up to you and me to make sure uh, that we are on the right side of history. And though the long arc of history, uh, uh, long arc of the moral universe may bend toward justice, it still doesn't mean that you and I aren't obligated to be the benders of that arc. So uh, my challenge to you is to be the benders of the arc. So, um, congratulations uh, and thank you for your curiosity um, and for, for I, and I think you're going to be the people, the young people, uh, the advocates, the teachers, the educators, the social workers that are going to save our republic. So thank you very much.